Now that the workflow is deployed, it is ready to test. In step 13, we will test this out by starting a few new instances of the temporary access workflow with different combinations of additional tasks and dates. This is all to verify that all of the conditional executions and escalations in our workflow work as expected. To get this test sequence rolling, we will be using the temporary access request form to start four new instances of the workflow. Now up to this point, we really haven't worked with this form yet. So to get to it, you will need to open your K2 designer environment. If you're not on a K2 virtual machine or the shortcut does not appear on your machine, you may need to ask your administrator for the URL to your K2 designer environment. This also applies to the K2 workspace link that we will be using later on. On a K2 virtual machine, to open up K2 Designer, go down to your Start button, open up All Programs, K2 Black Pearl, go down into the K2 Smart Forms folder, and click on the K2 Designer shortcut. Once this opens up, we're going to use the Category tree here on the left. You can go into the All Items group, open up K2 Learning, and then the Temporary Access Application folder. Once you're in there, you can click on the Temporary Access Request form one time to select it. We can add these test entries in now by going to the Properties pane here for the form and click on the Runtime URL to open this form up in a new tab. Just a hint, if you decide to come back to this form later on, you may want to add this URL to your favorites for later use. Also, keep in mind, the runtime URL here is the web address or link that allows your users to access your smart forms. This form may take a few moments to load up if it's the first time you've hit it today. Once it does load up, we're going to add data for each of the test requests. I'll walk through entering a couple of the requests here, but then to save some time, I'm going to pause the video and enter in the rest of them as listed on the table for step 13 of the student guide for this tutorial. I will also push that table up to the screen here for you to pause on and enter in the rest of them yourself. Make sure to select the options exactly as shown on my screen as I do it and in the table, since we will be using reports later to validate that the workflow is executing as expected. Make a note of the approver value for these as well, because this user will need to be logged in to approve the requests as we move through the testing. In my examples, the form is going to default as Jono for the approver on the K2 virtual machine, since he is the manager of the admin account. It may be your manager in your own environment, so be sure to ask that person to help you out with the test. Okay, for the first test item, I'm going to enter in the full name as first test. For the company, set it to first test company. In this one, I'll set start date to today's date. End date can be tomorrow. For AD login required, additional IT tasks and additional HR tasks, we will leave those all unchecked or basically set to no, we don't need those, and submit the form. When you do submit the form, you should see a confirmation message. Then at that point in the background, K2 is running through the process of starting the workflow for this entry. Moving on to the second test item, I'm going to enter in for the full name second test. For a company, put in second test company. Again, for start date, select today's date. For end date, we can set it to two days from today's date. For AD login required, leave that set to no or unchecked. Put a check in additional IT tasks as we would like the IT department to work on this. When the descriptions box opens up, enter in additional IT tasks. You can put it in parentheses if you'd like. And then leave additional HR tasks unchecked or set to no. Submit that form. Great, we have two more test items to enter in per the table in the user guide. Please review that if you're following along with me and enter those in on your own. I'm going to pause the video here to speed up the process a bit and then we'll come back and continue on with the testing. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you were able to get the third and fourth test items entered in. At this point, we can close the form and close any other open browser windows before moving on. 
If you are on the K2 virtual server environment, open up the Approvers Internet Explorer using the user shortcuts down here in the lower right. Again, in my case, I'm going to open up Jono's instance, which we can find under the legal group. All users on the K2 virtual server machine do use the same password. If you are prompted to enter one in, it is K2 Pass with the capital K and an exclamation at the end. Alternatively, if you are in your own environment, ask the approver that you noted while completing the requests to log in so that they can approve the requests assigned to them and help you out. I'm going to open up Jono's Outlook web access through the web browser here, as that's much easier to work with for this test. In his list of new messages, we should see four approval tasks for the approver after working through his login process. And there should be one for each of the tests that we started. Okay, it looks like they're all there. Let's run through and open the link for each of the tasks and then approve each request. I'll do that for the first one here. We'll set that to approved. And we can close the form. Alternatively, you could just reply to the emails for each of these tasks. For the second one, I'll open up the message and enter in the word approved in the body of the message and then send it off. These are called smart actions when we do this. Smart actions allow your users to simply reply to the task notification email with their action decision in the message body. For example, to approve a request, the user can simply reply to the task notification email with the word approved as the first line in the message body content. Moving down to the third test, let's do it here. As I enter this in, K2 basically when it receives the message is going to read this action and move the workflow along accordingly as it monitors its own email inbox. This feature is for convenience as it allows your users to action a task assigned to them without having to open and submit the form. Now you may not want to do this for every single process as you have requirements around it, but it is available if you need it. And that was it for the fourth test. Now we can close all the open browser windows for Jono. As the originator of these test instances now, let's open up K2 Workspace. You can find that by going to the Start button on a K2 virtual machine, open up all programs, K2 Black Pearl, and select K2 Black Pearl Workspace. When Workspace opens up in your browser, go over here to the left side and click the Process Overview Report link. As this report appears, it may take a few seconds, Click on the Temporary Access Application Workflow to view the four instances of the workflow that are currently running. Let's use the ViewFlow Report icon to launch the ViewFlow Report and verify that the workflows are at the expected activities. This will help us with our testing based on what we selected in the form. For the first test, it should have skipped the Create Active Directory Account step, the IT task step, and it should have skipped the HR task step. As we can see, it is waiting at the Extend Access step. This looks good so far. Remember, for this test, we didn't select AD Login Required, Additional IT Tasks, or HR Tasks. This accounts for the path coming out and around the IT and HR tasks and avoiding the parallel path. Let's head over to the second test. For this one, it should have skipped the Create Active Directory Account step but it should be waiting at the IT task step. And that looks good. Let's go back and look at the third test. For this one, it should have skipped the Create Active Directory Account step, and it should be waiting at the HR tasks step. I like that, it looks good. Let's again go back and review the fourth test. This one actually executed the Create Active Directory Account step, and it is currently running in the parallel path now by waiting for both the IT tasks and also waiting at the HR task steps. If you do have some time as a sidestep, go ahead and submit another request and then ask the approver to reject that request. Or you can just reject the request as the approver on a K2 virtual machine, and that way we can test that path as well. Next, we will move on to complete the outstanding IT tasks that are sitting out there. If you are using the K2 provided virtual machine, open up Internet Explorer as a user from the operations group. 
Otherwise, you can open Internet Explorer as a user from the group that you selected for the IT task when building out the workflow piece earlier on. Ask that person to browse to the K2 workspace and open their work list. In my instance, I'm going to open up a browser for Hubert as he is in the operations group on the K2 virtual machine. I'll go to K2 workspace when his browser opens up at the following link. It's https k2.denalix.com forward slash workspace. Here we see two tasks for the IT task step. It's the fourth test and the second test. For both of these tasks, let's open the task form and then complete both of them by using the IT tasks completed action. I'll start with the second test, open up the form, from the Actions option, I'll select the IT Task Completed Action and submit it off. Closing that out, next I'll go open the fourth test and do the same thing. There we go, we'll get that sent off. Now let's return to the Viewflow reports. If you did happen to leave that open, go back to K2 Workspace under the Process Instances report and go into the Temporary Access Application workflow. You may need to reopen K2 Workspace and drill back into that. For the second test workflow, we should see now that the IT task step has completed and the workflow moved on to the Extend Access step. This is because there were no HR tasks for this request to wait on. Let's move back and look at the fourth test workflow. We should see that the IT task step has completed now, but the workflow has not moved on to the extend access step. This is because there is still an active HR task that it's waiting on to be completed for this request. Let's go get this one moving. Next, we can complete the outstanding HR tasks. If you are using the K2 provided virtual server, open up Internet Explorer as a user from the human resources group. Otherwise, you can open up your web browser as a user in the group you selected for the HR tasks destination when you built the workflow out. Ask one of those individuals to browse to the K2 workspace and open their work list. I'll open up an instance of Julie's browser at this point on the K2 virtual machine because she's part of the human resources group shown here. Once the browser opens, I'll go into K2 workspace. Here we can see two tasks for the HR group assigned running as the temporary access request process. As we did for the IT tasks, let's open these up and submit the forms with the HR tasks completed as the action. I'll start with this first one here. And we'll send that one off. Let's go back and do the second one. And Julie can send that off. Thanks, Julie, for sending those on. Now let's go back to the Process Instances Reports page to look at the view flows for these test items. Let's open up the fourth test. Here we can see that the fourth test workflow has now progressed to the Extend Access step. This is because both the IT tasks and the HR tasks were completed. This verifies that our parallel workflow configuration is working as we expected. Let's go back and open up the third test instance Viewflow report. Here, this instance should have also progressed to the extend access step. If you entered the dates correctly, the third test instance should actually already have moved on to the set status expired step. This is because the end date for this request was two days ago. Remember that we defined an escalation for the extend access task to expire one day after the end date of the request. Because there was no Active Directory account for the third test request, the workflow did not try to disable the account and the workflow completed. If this is what you see in the Viewflow report, it means that the escalation and conditional line rules are working as expected. If you don't have it open already, let's go back and open up K2 Workspace as the user who initially requested the temporary access. In my case, I do have it open as the admin account because we were already in that. If you do have K2 Workspace open, go back to the home page where you can get to the task work list. Here we see two instances for the temporary access request workflow sitting in the admin user's work list, the first test and the fourth test. Let's start by opening up the first test request form. 
and select the Do Not Extend Access option and submit the form. When you're done with that, go back and open up the fourth test. Let's select a date in the future for the end date. And then select the Extend Access action. And when you're ready, submit the form. We're going to extend this access for this one because the project is going a bit longer than expected. If you refresh your task list now, you should not see any extend access tasks because the remaining tasks are delayed until one day before the end date. For example, the second test does not show up in the requester's task list just yet. This is because we delayed this task to start one day before the temporary access is due to expire. In fact, if you go back to the process instance report in Workspace, then open up the Viewflow report for the second test, double click the Extend Access step, you should see that the status is waiting and the start date is a date in the future. If you go back and open the Viewflow report for the fourth test workflow, you should see that the Extend Access line was followed and the activity looped back to itself. If you double-click the Extend Access step, notice that the status is waiting with a start date to begin this activity again sometime in the future. It's based on the end date that you selected in the form. Notice at the bottom of this screen that there are multiple instances of this activity here. This is because this activity was started twice within the same process instance. You can click the arrows to move between the reporting data for each instance of this activity. That all seems to be working as desired. At this point, we are done with the testing, so you can close all browser windows. To do another quick review, in this step, we tested our workflow to verify that the workflow is executing as expected. Between the conditional paths, the start rules, and escalation rules, you have learned a good bit about building more complex workflows with K2 Studio. We do appreciate the time you've given us to teach you more about building these workflows and applications. This is the end of part three for this tutorial. When you're ready, you can move on to part four, where we will look at creating a composite smart object and a view so that it is easier to report on temporary access requests.